What's up everybody? Okay, so back in the day when you were doing these long division problems, uh, you would, let's just go ahead and do this real quick and I'll, I'll explain what I'm talking about in a moment. Uh, so, how many times is four going to nine? Two, cool. So two times four, that's eight. Nine minus eight is uh, one. Uh, drop down the two, four goes into 12 three times. Sweet. Three times four is 12, you get a remainder of zero. Now. The reason why I'm bringing this up is uh, we've been talking a lot about polynomial division, right? And uh, the reason why uh, having a remainder of zero is cool is because the following is true. The reason why we learn division is because it's kind of like the opposite of multiplying, right? Um, so your answer to these problems pretty much means you can do something like this. 4 times 23 gets you back to 92. You've figured out a way of breaking up 92 by bits of 4. Well, 23 times, right? And uh, the reason why this is important and the whole purpose we've learned about polynomial division or the reason why we've been working with it is this is gonna be a way of taking a polynomial and breaking it down into its factors, okay? So it's a way of factoring more complicated uh, polynomials, which we haven't really been able to do yet. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got a problem real quick. It's uh, divide x cubed plus x squared minus five x plus three. I'm gonna do this by synthetic division because it's pretty quick. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is set this equal to zero. And I'm gonna solve for that. So plus one to both sides, so that's gonna be one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the one here, take my synthetic bar, write the coefficients down. So one, one, negative five, and three. Um, drop down this first guy, get one. One times one is one, one plus one, that would two, one times two is two, negative five plus two, well that's gonna give me uh, negative three, and then one times negative three, we get negative three. Three um, plus negative three gives me zero. So here is my remainder, it is zero. Now a few of you guys have been asking, um, when I write this final answer, do I need to include this like over the whole x minus one part? And the answer is no. Um, this would just become your, your answer. So the answer to this problem is going to be uh, let's see here, minus three, um, this would get an x, um, plus in front of it, and then this would get a x squared, okay? So the reason why I care about this, or the reason why this all makes sense to what I was showing you earlier is this. If I were to write this as a long division problem, uh, now I'm not actually gonna do this, but just to give you a heads up, and I'm solving it by x minus one, right? Uh, sorry, dividing it by x minus one. The answer would be the same thing we got for synthetic. That would go up here, right? If we were to do this with long division. If you'd like to, you can give it a shot. Now, the reason why I bring this up is, is because just like with the previous problem, I could write this times this to really get me back to here. That's just the whole point of learning what division is, because again, it has to do with the whole multiplication. So x minus one times x squared plus two x minus three equals that right there. Now, why this is cool? Well, if you take a look at this, um, I've, break in, I've broken down this whole x cubed bit into x minus one times this. Now, we've learned how to factor this and uh, I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna leave this x minus one out front and then I'm gonna factor this in whichever way you'd like to, um, but I'm gonna end up factoring it looking like this. This is gonna be x um, plus three x minus one or x minus one x plus three whichever order you want um, what's cool about this is i've actually technically taken it from here all the way down to its fully factored form why that's cool is well one i know now very easily i can get all the x-intercepts of this polynomial but two i can also sketch it and i can do a couple other things i can learn a little bit more about this than if it were just left in standard form so Polynomial division is gonna be very key to either A, fully factoring these, or finding out its x-intercepts so you can actually sketch them. Um, so that is really what today is about. Let's do another example of this. Um, let's divide three x cubed minus five x squared minus 34 x plus 24 by three x minus two. Now, uh, problem with this is, is if I go to, you know, set up a synthetic division, I would have to set this equal to zero and solve, so I'd add two to both sides, so you get three x equals two and then divide by three, x equals two thirds. Um, this would mean that I would have to set up the synthetic division like this, two thirds, I'd have uh, three 
have a minus 5, negative 34, and I'd have a 24, right? Now, some of you guys are a little uneasy with doing fractions and multiplying that in. It, it still will work, um, but some of you guys are like, meh, I don't really want to do that. So for those of you who are like, meh, don't want to do that, you can totally, totally, totally do this with long division, and it would be much easier, actually. That's why long division is helpful, actually helpful when you're doing things that aren't easily solved, or when you like solve them, uh, you get fractions. Um, but for those of you guys who are interested, um, with the synthetic, with the fraction. Let me show you what that might look like. So um, I'm gonna drop to this three down. So two thirds times three, uh, I'm gonna do the side work over here, would be two thirds times really three over one. Multiply straight across and you'd end up getting six over three, which is two, or you could think of like these threes canceling, you'd end up just getting two. So this is just gonna be two. Um, I'm gonna have negative five um, plus two, that's gonna give me what, negative three? So I'm gonna multiply now two thirds times negative three. Zoink, um, cut that out, I do. I just totally made a mistake. Ha <laughs> ha, editing. Anyway, so negative three, uh, we're gonna multiply that times two thirds, so two thirds times negative three over one. Um, those negative, uh, the three and the three cancel, you end up getting um, negative two, or think of it as negative six over three, which again, gives you negative two. So I'll write that negative two here. Negative 34 plus a negative two is gonna give me negative 36. I'm gonna multiply negative 36 times two thirds. So two thirds times negative 36 over one. Uh, that's gonna end up giving me, let's see here, two uh, times negative 36 um, over three, which is gonna be negative 24. Um, another way you could have done that is simplified uh, 36 and three, you would have also got negative 24, so that's gonna be negative 24, and voila, we end up getting a remainder of zero, okay? So let's go ahead and finish this out. So we have um, two thirds, uh, we have three, negative three and negative 36, we're gonna write this final answer like this, three x squared minus three x minus 36. And just as I was saying before, this answer times uh, the original what I'm dividing by would end up giving you this. So I'm gonna write this times that factor there. And this would be, for the most part, what would be there. Now, it's not gonna be um, two thirds, but you're gonna, you're gonna multiply your answer times what you're originally dividing by in its factored form, okay? Now let's keep on going with this one. Um, this, technically, before I even factor it, what I could do is I could factor out a, a three from this, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna write three, I'm gonna divide each of these by three, that would turn that to an x, a negative x, and uh, 36 um, divided by three is going to give me, um, let's see here, 12. So I'm gonna put a negative 12 here, and then three x minus two, and then I can factor this, so it's gonna go like this. Uh, let's see here, we got, um, I think this is gonna be x minus four, and then x plus three, that would be that part factored, and then three x minus two. So this would be the fully factored version of this original polynomial, so wah, there you go. So um, again, not so bad to do. Now you might be wondering, uh, for the last two couple times, what I've been doing is just kind of dividing by whatever I've given you. And that's gonna be a little bit problematic when I say, hey, fully factor or something like this, but I don't tell you what to divide by. So the next thing that you're gonna to need to learn is kind of limiting your options. And what I mean by that is you need to kind of figure out what you wanna divide by so you can break down um, these polynomials a little bit better. To learn how to better do this, I want you to think about it for a second and think about when you factor something like this. When you factor something like this, you're trying to come up with things that multiply to get to this number, but somehow will break down and get to four. So in your head, you're thinking, um, let's see here, eight and one, uh, four and two. All of these numbers are what are known as factors of this eight. So it's really the factors of this last number that for the most part have to do with breaking down factors. Similarly, if I had a number like, for example, 3x plus 4x minus, I don't know, 4, and I said factor that, these numbers will play a role in the factoring. So like the factors of this, so for instance, like uh, 1 is a factor, 
one and four, or two and two, right? These are ways of breaking down four. But at the same time, we're eventually gonna have to break this down because again, it's gonna either be three X or something like that. There's, there's gonna be some other um, things that we have to think about too. We have to think about the factors of three. So all in all, if we're, we're trying to breaking this down a little bit and thinking of ways to, to, to kind of like divide these polynomials to break them down, think of this general format. You have this leading coefficient term, you have this, this coefficient out here, that we'll call it A, and then you have this number all the way at the very, very end. These two things, the number at the very, very end and the number at the very, very front are going to help us figure out ways of breaking down these polynomials. And uh, I'm gonna give you a rule that kind of helps you out. So what you're gonna wanna do is find uh, factors of C, okay? And then you wanna find factors of A and what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide all the factors by C by the factors of A, and you're gonna think of both positive and negative options of that. Um, let me show you what I mean by this. So I wanna find all the possible um, roots or x-intercepts of this guy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the first term, and I'm gonna look at the last term, and the number out front here is one, and the number on the back here is negative 12. I wanna think of all the factors of negative 12, so I'm gonna do that real quick, or just 12, sorry. Um, so the factors of 12 could be one, two, um, three, four, six, and 12. These are the factors of 12. Factors of one, well, just one, okay? Now. The other thing you have to do is think of, well, there's a lot of different ways to get to 12, right? You can multiply it by one and negative 12, uh, two and negative six, right? So we need to think of each of these numbers as plus and minus. Same with what we're dividing by. And what we're gonna do to create a list, we're gonna divide each of these numbers by one and negative one, right? And that's going to give us our possible roots. Well, because all of these divide by one and negative one are the top, the, the possible roots of this polynomial or the x-intercepts is gonna be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, uh, plus or minus six, plus or minus 12. There's really, um, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's really only 12 options for this. There's no roots out beyond that. What's nice is this really limits it down. You're not gonna have anything like, for instance, um, a five um, or a seven, like none of those roots will work for that or none of the x-intercepts will work for, for this because it doesn't fit that description. Let's try this one, something with a, a number up front. So again, start with looking at the front, looking at the back. Let's do the roots of six. So the roots of six would be one, uh, two, three, and six, or sorry, not the roots, but the, the factors of six. Um, so I'm gonna think of plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six. Think of the factors of five. Well, there's only two, one, and five, that's it. So in order to get my possible x-intercepts for this guy, I'm just gonna go through all of these dividing by one, then all of these dividing by five. So uh, one divided by one, that gives me one. So that's gonna be plus or minus one, that's an option. Two divided by one, that's gonna be two. So plus or minus two, that's an option. Three divided by one, uh, that's gonna end up being three, that's an option. Uh, six divided by one is just six, but I'm also gonna go through and divide by um, five. So one divided by five is gonna be one fifth, um, two divided by five, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna keep going, so plus minus uh, three fifths and plus minus six fifths, okay? Um, so these would be all my potential x-intercepts of this particular polynomial. All right, um, so that would be a way of kind of boiling it down, settling it, and that is just one example of that. Okay, so let's put this all together and do one final problem for today. I know this video is getting a little long here, so I'm gonna try to, to hurry up. So this puts us into the final thing that I would like you to be able to do for this unit, which is fully factor or sketch 
a higher order polynomial that's something with like a degree of three or up. So let's start by finding all the potential x-intercepts of this um, a polynomial. So we're gonna start by looking at this guy, looking at this guy. So I have plus or minus um, one and two would be the factors of that guy. And then the factors of the front is also gonna be one and two because it's the same number. It's the only way we could break down two. So that gives us um, one divided by one and two divided by one, which is just gonna be one and two. But also we got one divided by two, so that's gonna be one half. And we got two divided by two. Well, two divided by two, to be honest, is really just one, right? We already kind of represented that, so we don't need to include that in our list because we already kind of have a, a one. So really, we have this six options that can break this down um, or x-intercepts of this. We have one, negative one, two, negative two, one half, and negative one half. So now that I have my options, I'm gonna divide um, one of these x-intercepts into this. And because these are x-intercepts, synthetic division is really our best bet. So I'm gonna start by picking one of these from random. Not all of these will work, so you kinda of have to go until you, you have gotten one to work. So let's start with um, just one. Let's try one real quick. So x-intercept of one, we're gonna put the coefficients of this in, and let's see what we get. Drop this down. 2, 1 times 2 is going to be 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 times 3 is uh, 3, negative 5 plus 3 is going to be negative 2, and 1 times negative 2, and we get um, negative 2. Perfect. So that's going to have a remainder of 0. Now, if you don't get a remainder of 0, that means your x-intercept is not an uh, x-intercept in that, and that's not going to help you break it down. So you're going to want to keep going until uh, you have found one of these x-intercepts that gives you a remainder of 0. Okay. Now at this point, we're going to uh, write down our answer. So this would be 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And we're going to multiply it by that guy, but as a factor. Now, remember, this is the x-intercept. So what factor set equal to 0 would give you 1? It's not going to be x plus 1, right? Because when you when you set that equal to 0 and you solve for it, that ends up giving you negative 1. So this factor does not match this. What you would have to do is think reverse a little bit. This one works a little bit better. X minus 1 equals 0. When you add 1 to both sides, you end up getting 1. So this is the factor uh, that would be matched to this. So we're going to write this x-intercept as x minus 1 because this guy, again, when you set it equal to 0, does give you an x-intercept of 1. That, that part I get is a little tricky. So once, I, once I've written it like this, now I have something that's a little bit easier to factor. So I'm going to factor this now. So this factor is down to 2x. You might have to dust off some cobwebs and break out the Japanese method. But um, this is going to be 2x, 2x. Okay, so this is going to, actually, no, this is not going to be a plus. This is going to be a minus. Uh, this would be the 2x minus 1, and then this is going to be x plus 2. Um, this would be the right factor. So 2x minus 1, x plus 2, and then x minus 1. So uh, if I were to set each of these equal to 0, the, the factors would be um, x equals, you'd add 1 divided by 2, this would be x equals 1 half. This would be x equals negative 2 if you set that equal to 0. And then lastly, this would be x equals 1 when you set that equal to 0 and solve. Um, and that would be the fully factored version of this. Um, now, if I wanted to sketch it, I could go ahead and sketch that as well. Um, I could write down the x-intercepts. So we have negative 2, 1. We have a 1. And then we have a 1 half as well. So those would be my three x-intercepts. Um, my degree for this is 3, so that's odd. With a leading coefficient, that's positive, which would mean my left arrow would be down. My right arrow is up. And then from there, we could do what we were doing before, which is just connecting the arrows, and then that would be a sketch version of that polynomial. So putting this all together, I know this is a lot for today, so we're gonna break this into two seconds. This is just the first day of it. Um, we're gonna have some more examples next time, um, but the next two assignments are gonna be really um, focused on this. So fully factoring um, polynomials, as well as eventually being able to sketch these as well. So if you guys have any additional questions, office hours are from one to two. Um, you guys have a wonderful day.
Talk to you later. Bye.